There are many ways to vet a religion. The spirituality it offers, its relations with other people, and of course its relation to money and power. Power is very critical when we study a religion because whenever you have a group of people following somebody, that generates potential for power. And power is corrupting. So when we study Islam, we have to see what is political Islam as opposed to spiritual Islam. Who usurped the messages of spirituality in order to gain dominion, in order to rule of other lands, to raise armies and send troops? And how was the messaging distorted? And who were utilized and manipulated scholars with big turbans and big beards, writing long essays, telling you that war is justified. We have many examples and it's very difficult for the average Muslim to go back into history and to see the, the particular events where the system of justice and equality was usurped and where the system of dominion or, or trying to control other people's lands was preferred. Of course that's what rulers do. Rulers actually raise armies to, to send to other places and Islam did that a lot. But where is the fault line? Where do we find that the misuse was there? We heard of Ibn Taymiyyah. The Caliph actually um, wanted to rage a war against the Mongols. The Mongols by that time, this is the third generation, and they actually had accepted Islam. Perhaps they accepted because somebody advised them that if you're going to rule Muslim lands, you might as well carry the pretense of being Muslims so that there is not a revolt against you. So the Caliph went to this Imam Ibn Taymiyyah, scholar, and asked him, can you issue me a fatwa which will allow Muslims to wage war against Muslims? And he did. After winning that battle, the Caliph wanted to now invade Christian Armenia. So he needed another fatwa because Christian Armenia was people of the book. And waging war against people of the book needed another fatwa, dutifully provided by Nithaymiyah. So we have to see how scholars have been manipulated and used by Caliphs for basically power. Look at all the wars that happened in the beginning, right even in the first caliphs. Omar was assassinated, Usman was assassinated, Ali was assassinated, even Abu Bakr, there are stories that he was poisoned. What is all this killing? There was war between Ali and Muawiya, there was war between Hussein and Yazid. There's, there were so many wars, what were they about? They were not theological wars. These were wars of power. And so Muslims have to understand and recognize that when somebody calls you for arms, they're actually looking for power. Don't confuse that with religion. That is a fundamental. The religion is teaching you how do you interact with your God, how to you behave yourself with your other people, the people that you love, the people that you live with, the people that you work with, the societies you live in. What is your interaction with them? That's what the religion is about. It's not dominion. And in today's world, we have to understand that when they are told of us Darul Harb, Darul Adab, when we're talking about the abode of war and abode of peace, these are just mechanizations, these are just terminologies to justify war. Muslims don't need to be in power for justice and equality. Muslims in countries like Canada have more justice and power and, and equality than they have in their own countries which are ruled by Muslims. So which rule is better? A country that has separates the state from religion gives more equality, more justice. Isn't that the principle of Islam? Justice and equality? That's what we seek. So if we find a country where they write a constitution and they follow it, and that constitution allows equality and justice, that is our Sharia. That is something that we should support. That is something that we should strive for. There is no need to bear arms there. Even the vote is enough. And you vote and you tell your opinion that my principles, my Islamic principles, are enshrined in your constitution and therefore your constitution is my part of my religion and I support it. That is what we have to learn and understand. 
and not be manipulated by people who are on a power trip. The mullah is on a power trip, he wants to control every part of your life, he tells you Islam is a complete way of life. What that really means, that's a disguise, that's a code of saying, I will tell you everything, how you should prescribe your life. Everything in your life is dictated by me. It's enslavement, it's slavery. It's not religion. Religion is supposed to give you the freedom, the freedom that the Quran gives, because the Quran doesn't give you details. And this is what we have to understand, and how we pick up on the main messages, the real messages, and find the gem inside the religion, bypassing all those layers that were fabricated just for power. Understand power, you will understand religion. Who is this Mullah of today who fills me with guilt, who drains me of confidence, who robs me of pleasure, who sends me to death? I have a brain to think. I have a heart for compassion. I have the book to read. I have science to explore. There is no compulsion in religion. There is no woman or man unequal. There is no human without dignity. I am no longer guilty. I am confident and proud. My faith is honesty. My creed is justice. My goal is equality. I am a free Muslim of today. Are you?